Okay. Online, it looks like we have Andrew Torney, Cheryl Hartman, Christina Dewar, Alicia Beckholz, Lana McLarty, Irene Wara, Jason Hauser, Juanita Vero, uh, Kyla Talbert, Kayla Talbert, sorry, MCAT, Melissa Fisher, Michaeline Grimmett, and Shane Stack. In 206, we have Commissioner, oh, Cindy Kennedy just joined. We have Commissioner Slotnick and Strohmeyer, Allison Franz, Chris Lounsbury, Annie Cathy, Maddie Scott, Ann Hughes, Carrie Powers, Matt Jennings, Jacob Arlington, Allington, sorry, what? Allington, uh, Michelle Denman, and Chantel Gaynor. Okay, uh, let's see. Any public comment on items not on today's agenda? No, we'll roll right into the consent agenda. We have a whole bunch of standard employment agreements and a few other miscellaneous items. Any questions? Nothing on this list that I can like to pull out and talk about. It. Something else. See something here. <laughs> All right, I move to approve. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. Great. I'm glad you keep going. Sorry. I, I, I voice from the voice from the wilderness. I, I I move to approve the consent agenda and the standard employment. I'll second that. Any further discussion on the 12 items on the consent agenda or public comment? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to get a functional elevator out of that deal. Too. That's That's awesome. Awesome. Far better than an unfunctional elevator. Okay. Yes, so we have a number of action items today. We will begin with Ms. Flanna. She is. Okay, Flanna, would you like to introduce this contract with IMEG? Yes. Um, so before you, I have a contract with IMEG. Um, to represent the county in amending the city of Missoula zoning de designation on three county owned parcels um, that are within the city of Missoula. Um, so those parcels are located in the development park. Um, in 2023, the city and the county entered into an interlocal agreement that defined the intent to transfer ownership of certain park and stormwater parcels in the development park from county ownership to city ownership. And through that agreement, um, these three parcels were identified as eligible for sale by the county to private ownership. And in order to facilitate the sale of these parcels, um, the county intends to zone to change the city zoning on the properties from OP3 to M12, which is um, like an open park designation to industrial. Um, the cost of the contract will be paid for from the proceeds of the sale of the properties once the, the zone change is approved. Um, and the amount is $4,750. And um, IMEG will commence work immediately and should be completed within a year. Okay, questions? No, I'm familiar with this because I'm on the MDA board, but uh, this is just the next step in dealing with some of these uh, sort of vestigial pieces of parkish land out in the deep park. Okay. Vestigial pieces of parkish, parkish land. Yes, I, li I like that. <laughs> Any other questions or a motion? I would uh, move that we request the board to approve a contract with IMEG to get the zoning change done. Second. Further discussion or comment on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, Flanna. Thank you, Flanna. Aye. Thanks. I want to add my little thing to add is Flanna's done great work on this. Good job, Flanna. Thank you. Okay, Chris, uh, tell us about authorizing the CFO and CAO to include in the FY25 budget positions any and all grant funds as awarded. Yeah, so commissioners, just a couple of budget cleanup items before we get into the meat of the discussion today, <clears throat> excuse me, around uh, any potential enhancements to programs or services that you want to include. So as Andrew and I are working through the budget with Michelle and Micah and the rest of the team, there are often grant awards which include positions which will be grant funded or operational costs that will be grant funded. We're just asking for authorization for us to go ahead and include those in the budget since they aren't coming from property tax dollars. They're funded outside of kind of the normal process to make sure that we kind of wrap all of those in and they get incorporated and included in the FY25 budget document when it's presented to you on September 5th. And we'll be accounting for all the money that's coming in. That's what we're attempting to do. 
Okay, any other questions on that one? I Juanita? move that we approve. Oh, I'm sorry. I move that the board approve and authorize the CFO and CAO to include the 2025 budget positions. Any and all grant funds as ordered. Second that. Further discussion or comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, similar item. Yeah, so similar to this, commissioners, as you know, throughout the course of fiscal year 24, there were some <clears throat> uh, changes that were approved, things like moving the security forces from a contract to actual employment. So this uh, request today is again to authorize the chief financial officer <clears throat> and the chief administrative officer, as well as the budget team to include those costs in the FY25 budget. Again, just trying to incorporate any changes that have happened in FY25 with the intention of those going forward into FY26 and in perpetuity to make sure that those get wrapped up and included in the budget. They were part of the original base budget that was presented to you, so you won't see them as enhancement requests, but we just want to make sure again that we're accounting for all of those in that uh, FY25 final budget presentation that will happen on September 5th. Okay, so. All right, I would request the board authorize the CAO to include in the FY 2025 budget any previously approved one time and ongoing expenses. Okay. What do you think, Juanita? Here, my second. Okay, any further discussion or comment on this? Seeing none, all in favor? All right. Okay, shifting over to the fairgrounds, Chris. Yeah, so the first uh, couple of requests that we have here are largely self-funded, so I just want to recognize that. So as you all know, as we've been going through the fairgrounds project, uh, we've made substantial investments in the fairgrounds, including the most recent investment uh, in the fairgrounds grandstands, as well as changes and updates to historical buildings, including culinary and commercial arts building and, and lots of the others. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we are moving back to a six-day fair from the five-day fair that we had. This was our first year under the new six-day fair uh, event, which adds additional revenue into the budget to help cover the costs of some of those projects. And the fairground staff is planning on several other events throughout the year that will help to um, cover those costs. And so this is a request to um, add those things into the uh, capital improvement plan for the fairgrounds, along with the associated revenue that will help to pay for the, the cost of those projects. So since we just had the fair, does this uh, take into account what actually was spent and what came in via revenue, or are we still sorting that out? So, yeah, so as uh, as folks might remember, it's the fairgrounds budget is a little weird because it splits fiscal years. So the revenue actually will be reflected in fiscal year 25, although some of the contracts that we sign uh, happen and get paid in fiscal year 24 because we have to be under contract prior to the fair event happening in August. And so those things happen in June. So this is just moving some of that stuff into the fiscal year 25 budget, uh, but then the re uh, but also recognizing that revenue, which is actually happening in fiscal year 25 because those events or the event fair event itself for the six day happened in fiscal year 25 and the other event that is planned uh, is also in fiscal year 25 uh, which is a motorsports event in the fall okay good questions other questions i no i move to approve the fairgrounds redevelopment cip second further discussion or comment all in favor. Going associated Aye. revenue with the additional of, of the six day fair and events. So, yes. And I. Yeah, we want, we want the revenue too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Did you vote, Juanita? Yep. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Things okay. Are lagging here in Greeno. Sorry. No. Okay. Uh, oh, great. Moving on to open space bond items. Yeah, so uh, commissioners, and I think Andrew is online if he wants to speak to this one, but uh, as you know, we have some open space bond projects that have been approved uh, that we'll be capturing the revenue for through the issuance of those uh, bonds that were voter approved and can be only spent on open space projects. Uh, we are, you'll notice this is reflected as three different chunks of money, and I yeah. believe, and this is the part of Andrew or maybe Michelle might even know, I think that is because they are coming from two different bond groups. One is the oh. bonds that were previously approved in 08. Because there's two ish. Oh, there's two years. Oh, Andrew's right there. He'll remember there's the years two, of those bonds. Andrew. Two years worth. Yeah, 17 is one of them. Right, there was a previous eight. issuance, and the new issuance, they'd like the uh, new money by November 15th. We're already in talks with our municipal financial advisors and bankers to get that issuance out on the street. 
Thanks. And Andrew, what were the two years of the bonds? Was it 17 is the newest one? Was it, I think it's 16. Okay. Yeah, somewhere. It's 18. <laughs> and we've got an 18. <laughs> They're somewhere between 2016 and 2018. I think it was 18. Was it 18? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I and, the, and the last of the bonds from the initial round. So, remember that. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Great. I would request the board approve the following open space bonds for inclusion in the FY 2025 budget. Second. On uh, any further discussion or public comment on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so Commissioner, okay. now we now we get into the more complicated item where we look at the ongoing requests that are uh, directly impactful to the county's budget and are funded by property taxes. And so uh, as a strategy going into this year, as you know, we are, uh, because it is an on reappraisal year and also um, just because of the sensitivity around property taxes, we are trying to keep uh, any new requests as pared back as possible. So I do have some staff recommendations for these as we go through, uh, just starting with an overarching goal that we would like to stay uh, under what the cost is to add one additional mill potentially onto people's property taxes. And for frame of reference for folks, because a mill doesn't really mean anything when we talk to folks, if we stay under that number approximately, for a $500,000 home in Missoula, you would be talking about an increase that is reflective of $6.75 per year um, when we talk about that dollar amount. And that dollar amount is right around $380,000 that it will generate. So we would not be able to fund all of the requests that are before you um, in the way that they're presented, but we would potentially be able to fund a portion of each of these uh, requests as as we look at them going forward. And so, but my suggestion is that uh, given the kind of fluctuation that we're continuing to see with DOR as we work through that issue that Andrew presented to you yesterday during his CFO update, that that kind of be the target that, that the commission aim for as you guys are considering this. And then as we get into these, uh, I'll talk about what each one of these for the staff recommendation is, and you can decide if you want to go forward with the staff recommendation, approve them or deny them. So. Okay. Okay. And I just want to say to the thousands of people watching at home that uh, this is not the first time we've considered this. This isn't brand new news. Uh, we have heard the experts who work in these departments make the case for these things, and, and every case was compelling, uh, and there's been a ton of deliberation, and now we're at the, the penultimate step, the end step. I don't want anybody to think, well, they just learned about this today, which is not the case. Yeah, and that's a good point, Josh. Uh, each of these departments came and presented yes. during one of your yes. administrative meetings, so those meetings that's are recorded and available for folks if they want to go back and listen to the reasoning exactly. behind them. And there's Andrew in person, which is great. Thanks. <laughs> that, that is exactly what I was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Carry on. So if if we're okay with that, then we'll go forward. So uh, the first two here are the ones from the Justice Court. Uh, my uh, staff recommendation: those two is that they be approved as they're presented. Again, this is the uh, county's commitment to funding the new domestic violence court that is happening in uh, Judge Peel's courtroom, uh, which we're seeing some success with. That that program is just beginning. And then the other is uh, the Road Court, which is the DUI court, another name for the DUI court. Uh, that's happening in Judge Holloway's courtroom. That has been funded through grant resources for a number of years, has been very successful. Uh, again, I, I, was, I believe when Landy was presenting on this particular issue, what they see is a, a drop in recidivism, folks are getting a second or subsequent DUI uh, that's pretty substantial in the 70 plus uh, percent range, um, even, even higher than that. So uh, again, these are really small dollar amounts, uh, about $5,900 for the domestic violence court and about five thousand hundred dollars for justice. So I'm kind of pairing those together because they're the courts and also pretty small. So do we do you want to go through all uh, of we can steps? we can go through all of them and you can vote on them <clears throat> vote on the staff recommendations for them or again if you'd like to do them individually I'll defer to the commission obviously. How about you go through all of them and sure, then, then you we can, uh, unless folks have comments on these things as we go, yeah, and, and you can prevent, provide the staff record. Might be able to might, I might have to comment, but that's okay. Be brief. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next one on this is the attorney's expanded mental health services contract. Uh, is this, is this for, United Minds? This is United Minds, yes. Uh, so the county contracts with United Minds, uh, you had Talon here at the attorney's update this week uh, to, to talk a little bit about the work that they do. Um, and County Attorney Jennings is here as well if you have questions. Uh, this would add some additional funding to that contract in the amount of $25,000. 
Uh, this is specifically for them to get those emergency evaluations that they need when they are contemplating and or have detained somebody uh, who may or may not be a harm to themselves. And that's what they're attempting to determine through the, that, that process that they go through that uh, County Attorney Talon, Talon explained. Um, and so uh, this request is for $25,000. Again, it's a pretty small amount. I think it's possible to incorporate that again and stay under that kind of one mil uh, goal that we talked about uh, at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, paired with that is the attorney's discovery software application. I, both uh, Ken Marshall, our chief technology officer, and I don't know if it was Matt who was here that particular day who presented on it, but I, I think both of them recognize that they're continues to be an expanded need uh, related to their ability to meet their statutory obligation uh, to provide discovery when they are involved in both criminal and civil litigation, um, representing the county and the state respectively in those two things. Uh, that contract is uh, for $44,970. Again, um, it's an ongoing cost, but I think it can, yeah, it can be covered um, inside that one mil cap. Questions on that? So after Matt's presentation, I was ready to personally just go begin mowing lawns and baking cookies to get this done. Yeah. <laughs> that is a you very good make a strong case. Matt, 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 Matt is pretty good at making a case. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the meeting's <laughs> the meeting is not over yet. You yeah, right. firing up that mower before we're done. So. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the facility AED lease program. So just as a reminder for folks, uh, the county has automatic external defibrillators. That's what AED stands for, placed throughout county buildings in case there is an emergency either with staff or with the public. This moves those AEDs to a lease program so they are continuously maintained and updated as they need to be uh, to meet the latest standards as well as making sure that they uh, have good batteries and pads if they're needed, all of the kind of equipment. Again, it's a pretty small uh, dollar amount for that request, and I think can probably be uh, incorporated uh, in under the cap. Questions on that? So the okay. next one I'll get to is the GI, uh, GIS uh, aerial imaging program. <clears throat> uh, this is a $42,000 request. So as folks might recall, uh, when I think it was Ken who presented on this uh, one because Mike was out of town, uh, the county's aerial imagery is very old at this point. Uh, more than 10 years old. Uh, and as we all know, there's been significant growth and expansion through that. Uh, this would be a three year contract, as I recall, uh, at $42,000 a year uh, that would allow us to update those images over the course of three years. They basically fly sections of the county and we would get an updated set of that aerial imaging. This is really important both uh, for the GIS world, but also for the emergency response world because it's what they <clears throat> use as part of the map to be able to see houses and other features on the ground. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to incorporate this cost because of the ongoing nature for it and the fact that it will be updated. But what I would suggest is potentially we move this, uh, consider moving this as to a one-time expense um, and consider Andrew and uh, Mike and those guys will work will work on whether or not we can fund this as a one-time expense and fund the whole three, the, three the whole cost yeah. of the three-year contract as a one-time expense. Okay. Andrew, um, anything you'd like to add on that, Andrew? No, I think. We can figure something out there. Yeah, I, I think we can probably adapt to that one. Okay. Uh, the next one is the community justice victim advocate support. So commissioners, this one, uh, and when we get to it, the grants one, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about. So this is a request, uh, as you know, most of the crime victims advocate program is grant funded. Uh, we have incredible grant staff, both in the grants department, but also in Chantel shop who write these uh, nationally competitive and statewide competitive grants. Um, and unfortunately, uh, while we have been really successful, that is both to our benefit and our drawback because eventually after funders have for a while, they begin to think, well, maybe the community should be investing in this and they aren't necessarily as likely to award grants. And so uh, you saw a request for this last year to begin moving the crime victims advocates to have some hard uh, funded tax supported positions. And so while we can't fit the entire 231-162 into this year, my recommendation is that we fund half of that amount this year and then consider the other half in fiscal year 26's budget um, just to show that commitment to the department. These folks work tirelessly for victims of crime, uh, both in the city and countywide, to make sure that they have uh, the support and services that they need in order to be able to serve victims. Uh, it's uh, as as it is for the uh, county attorney's office where it is often an unrecognized uh, job and the, that these folks go through. This is a, a position that is very similar to that. Folks uh, often think that if you go and report a crime that immediately everything is kind of taken off your shoulders and 
uh, you're taking care of. And the reality is without crime victims advocates, those folks often uh, don't have supports in place to be able to help them through the system as they navigate kind of complex criminal matters, which are not people's everyday experience outside of The that. word that you said in there that I want to reiterate is commitment, that this is our next step and there will be other steps and we will we will get to complete funding and this is where we are but we are committed uh so the next one is the community grants uh staff support so as you know uh, we asked the grants program uh, to go through kind of an evaluation of the services that they provide and look at how they could provide additional supports across missoula county uh, for being able to get grants to help offset property taxes um, and other needs of the county uh, across that. And so that what they came back with was a request uh, to uh, create two new lead work positions, a director level position and one additional FTE uh, grants technician position as the first piece of that build out. Um, they are proposing this as a half year uh, request, which is why the amount is 111,598. It's really about double that as the ongoing request, which again, I don't think we can incorporate into this year's budget. So what I'm recommending from a staff perspective is that we fund the enhancement for the director and then work with them on whether the grants tech at a half year or the two promotional opportunities are the more important pieces as they begin to build out that program. And again, look at funding approximately uh, half the value of this request to kind of recognize those needs and allow us to continue down that process. You had a really great presentation by Michelle and uh, Melissa and others, uh, Dave Wall, our elected auditor, about the need for really improving the way that we deal with grants to make sure we stay in compliance with both the current and in, um, upcoming federal regulations around that. Uh, as you all know, we get a significant amount of grant funding somewhere north of $11 million uh, each year in that, uh, which means that we aren't having to look at other ways to fund that. So it's a small investment. And again, Josh, as you were just saying, a, a first step in yeah. kind of showing our support for those changes to happen in our uh, in our grant staff. So basically, this would be about 55,000 or so. Uh, somewhere in the 55 to 65,000 range. Andrew, 55, 799. Yeah, as I say, Andrew and I will work with with them to figure out which of those positions and we'll come up with exactly okay. that number. Uh, I, I used $70,000 in making sure that we were under our number because I wasn't sure which direction they would lead as to whether it's the new position at half year or the, uh, the promotional opportunities. So uh, just, okay. just as a cushion for okay. that to make sure we were still under it. Uh, the first responder uh, wellness app actually uh, is on here as an ongoing request because uh, we think it will become that, but Erica uh, believes that she has capacity in the wellness and uh, work comp budgets to be able to do this, so it won't have a direct tax impact this uh, this year. It may in future years, so I'm going to recommend that you uh, approve that uh, request with that kind of being the source funding for this first year, um, and then we'll have to see where we go uh, for that next one. Uh, on the technology software licenses, uh, you might remember when Ken did this, it's a it's a pretty small cost, but what it allows them to do, and I'm going to do a horrible job of, of doing this, it allows them to review their software that they've written in a more comprehensive way and to make sure that there aren't security flaws and bugs uh, in that software, uh, helping to make sure that our environment maintains its security. As, as you know from the fact that we all get quarterly cybersecurity uh, training as well as other training from our technology department, um, we are a prime target for uh, bad actors when it comes to that. And so this is a pretty small investment in software that will make a pretty big impact on their end of the world and helping keep us secure. So I, again, I included that uh, in the staff recommendation for the $2,216. Uh, and again, we still would stay under that. Uh, the next one is the file foster child care program. So you might remember you heard from Shannon uh, about this while she was serving as our uh, interim chief health officer. Uh, this is the program that uh, pays for a registered nurse uh, is partially grant funded um, and uh, pays for that registered nurse when somebody, when a child is taken and placed in foster care to make sure that all of their medical records uh, are compiled so that when they go for their first visit with Partnership Health Center, which provides the initial visit, and then subsequent visits with providers who might provide specialized services from occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, that all of those records uh, stay complete and contained and then can go back with the child when they go back to be permanent, either uh, into permanent placement or back to the family um, so that they have a good record um, of that and they make sure that those super vulnerable children have a, 
a comprehensive medical thing. The uh, amount of this request originally was about $40,000. Uh, they were successful in getting another grant to help offset some of that cost. So the ongoing piece that they're asking for is $10,473 uh, again. And I think we can include that and stay under the, the, the goal that I talked about at the beginning. Uh, the land surveyor part-time position at 69426 is another position, another place where I think we're going to need to move this potentially to a one-time request. Um, this is to help them catch up on a significant backlog um, of land survey work that they have. Um, I know the request is for it to be ongoing for that part-time position. I there isn't a way for us to do that and stay under the one the goal that we set uh, for this year. Um, so my uh, request would be that we move this to a one-time request, and then we'll work with Andrew and the surveyors uh, to 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 do that and fund it as a, a, a temporary position instead of a permanent part-time position. Yeah. Okay. And then the last thing is the printer leases, which I believe Mel might have presented on, I'm not sure. Yeah, and I chatted with Mel a little bit this morning. There was some confusion when she presented if whether or not this was new um, money that was requested, and it is indeed. They are gonna issue the RFP. Um, they don't have the, the exact number yet, but this 6,000 is, um, would be to just uh, cover any anticipated increase in costs for the continuing this lease program. And so again, at $6,000, that's a pretty small request and can fit inside our cap. The really quick math that I did on this, although Andrew's probably over there doing exact mm -hmm. on me, uh, was that that would put us below at a, right around $360,000, which is below the number we were aiming for. So we have a little bit of wiggle room if we need to, but that's what the staff recommendation would be. Um, around these as we look at incorporating them into the FY25 budget presentation. Again, uh, you'll vote on this today. Your final vote, of course, will be when you actually adopt the budget. Uh, new money doesn't really get authorized until then, but this gives Andrew and I, this is what we're trying to get into the budget, um, and the team is trying to get into the budget as we, we look on that. And as you heard from Andrew uh, yesterday, we're still working on numbers with DOR. So I, was, I just wanted to reiterate that it's the, the, the trickiness of this process dealing with expenses when we don't yet have a clear picture of what revenue is. And the latest numbers we got from the DOR, as we pointed out the other day, were not matching our conception with reality. And Andrew's in negotiations with them. So there's some. There's some squishiness, some prediction we have to make here. And I like the conservative nature of this, that if things don't go our way with the DOR, we still are limiting the impact on property taxpayers. So 360 will buy us all of this, understanding that number six and 12 are one-time expenses and uh, seven and eight community justice and community programs grant staff would be phased in and basically half of what we're seeing right here. Correct. And what are we doing with number four? That's that's the full. The attorney's one would be the full. Yes. Full yeah. Yes. Other questions on uh, any of this or staff recommendation? Would move we request the board approve the following ongoing property tax funded requests. I need to say minus as as, as presented as minus, presented uh, the staff by the staff recommendation because some of these are ongoing. So as provided <laughs> by the staff recommendation. Peter. Yes, I'm sorry, Chris. Again, that figure what we're. Yeah, we were trying to stay under about 360. Right, we were trying to stay under 380, and my really back of the napkin math was we would be right around 360,000. Second, thank you. Did you second that, Juanita? Sorry if this is. Juanita, are you there? Did... Second. Okay. Uh, any uh, further discussion or comment from anyone on these items? I would say if anybody out there wants to talk about the revenue piece, because we're not really diving into the weeds there, um, I can talk to anyone about that, because it sounds sort of vague right here, but that's not the time and place, because it would be 35 minutes. I spoke to Mr. Aurora fire, fire this morning. Each and every one of their categories went down, went down over a million dollars in taxable properties. How is that? That is insane. It's down to one hundred thousand dollars. I mean, their mill value's gone down. Every category. Did we instantly become Petroleum County? 
we're, we're not sure what's going on. We're in talks with Helena right now. Okay, thank, thank you for that. More to be revealed. Any uh, further discussion or public comment or staff comment? See, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, last item here. Uh, just really quickly, uh, yesterday you provided direction to staff. I'm not going to attempt to do justice, Josh. I thought you provided a great rationale, so I'll let you uh, talk again about that rationale of uh, holding off on the decision to put the uh, infrastructure funding on to the November ballot uh, for this year. And so this is just an opportunity to kind of formalize that and again ratify sure. that decision from yesterday. But I think you probably can talk about the, right. the rationale related to the yeah. wanting the legislature to, to do that Thank job you. first. Yes, absolutely. So we saw with the governor's property tax task force and their final recommend their final recommendations. Yeah. Yet another piece of a larger conversation around property tax reform that is absolutely statewide. When I chat with folks who are legislators and people who work in community development and in business, other parts of the state, there has never been this much enthusiasm around property tax reform. The legislature has all but promised to take this on. I think it will be number, this will be number one. If number two is in Medicaid expansion, they'll be, they'll be vying for those spots. If the legislature comes through, if they actually do create real property tax reform, that makes space for us to fund things like more money for roads and bridges in, without having to ask the voters to make this super difficult decision. Everybody says and knows that roads and bridges need to be dealt with in a way that's greater than we have been able to deal with them because of lack of money. And nobody wants to pay more in property taxes. These things are both real. It, 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 we're asking voters to make a really, really hard decision. If the legislature comes through on on their looks like uh, uh, comes through on creating real property tax reform we might not have to ask the voters to make this decision so what we're saying now is we're going to press pause here we're going to wait and see if over the next six eight months we see the legislature come through create real reform we might not need to do this we may be able to find money in other ways to attend to our infrastructure and if they don't we'll revisit this but right now the prudent thing to do is just to wait that's what we're going to do Okay, our motion would be to ratify our decision to remove from the ballot the question to the electors around infrastructure funding for roads, bridges, and trails. Other questions? Or motion? Can I add to that? It was great, Josh. Um, yes, I request that the board reconsider its decision from August 8th and remove from the ballot the question to the electors around infrastructure funding for roads, bridges, and trails. Second. Further discussion or comment on the motion? And I too would just reiterate that this does not uh, ameliorate the, the very real need for uh, significant ongoing maintenance and infrastructure investment. But we are in a wait and see mode to see if the legislature can deliver on the good, so to speak. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I don't think we have any correspondence or wildfire updates to be had. Anything Not else so. to discuss right now from anyone? Okay, we'll be adjourned. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. Bye.